In traditional societies, people move through three fundamental stages from birth to adulthood. First, you become the property of your parents' household. Then, your individuation begins, which is the second stage. You become the individual you were born to be. You are no longer a child, but not yet an adult. The third stage is your initiation into the tribe of your elders. Then, you cease to be your mother's object, and you become the property of your people and a warrior for your gods. But the modern world frustrates this final stage. If we want to become human again, we must revolt against the modern world and free ourselves from the constraints imposed on us by a global rule-based order. In the old days, give or take about a thousand years ago, uh, in Northern Europe, the right to become a human being had to be earned it wasn't given to you. Well, it was given to you by your parents if you stood the test. Parents who received their newborn baby did not automatically consider it a human being. The child had to earn the right to become human. Uh, parents, the father, might dunk it in, a, in an icy stream of water to put it to the test. Is it physically strong enough to survive in our cold environment? The mother, for example, was not allowed to nourish her baby without the approval of the father. And if the father said, if the father believed that the child didn't live up to his expectations, he had the right, the sole right, as the patriarch of the family, he had the right to discard the baby. He had the right to throw it to the wolves or, or to leave it outside at night in the winter time to let it die of frostbite. This Spartan treatment, they did not consider murder. You simply were not a human being unless you had stood the test. Even later in life, when you, uh, when you were a teenager, you had to go through another test, an, initi an initiation rite, to prove that you were no longer a child, no longer the child of your parents, but that you were ready to become a member, a fully grown member of your tribe, your nation, your people, your race. So there's an interesting saga about a 15-year-old kid named Glum uh, from Iceland, uh, he and his friends get on a boat on a ship to Norway to visit the relatives. But Glom's relative receives him without any kind of warmth. He greets, he greets his relative, he greets Glom, but uh, refuses to speak to him in any kind manner and kind of uh, shrubs him off like, uh, please kid, go away, I'm not interested in talking to you. So later that evening, Glom meets the, the local community at a banquet. He's also invited, but they seat him uh, all the way in the corner of the longhouse, out of sight. He's a bit depressed. People start talking behind his back as if he were lazy, a dumbass. So while everybody is having dinner and his relative uh, still refuses to talk to him, uh, a man enters the longhouse, a berserker, a huge guy, maybe seven feet, who knows, a really big guy. Uh, and the guy goes around the table asking everybody present, every man present, if they're interested in fighting him. So he's challenging people to duel him to the death. Of course, everybody uh, having dinner uh, is clever enough to say, no, 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 thank you. I don't want to get in trouble with you. All right. So then the big guy uh, goes over to Glom. Uh, Glom is lying on his back, pretending to be asleep. So the big guy, his name is Bjorn, gives Glom a kick. So the berserker challenges the 15 year old to a duel. Uh, Glom, of course, has no interest. So he but he stands up for himself and he speaks to the berserker and says, uh, I don't know where you're from, but where I'm from in Iceland, your behavior is considered that of a buffoon. This angers the, the big guy. So Glum picks up a piece of firewood, hits the berserker on his head three times, chases him out of the longhouse. And the next day, Glum is told that the berserker died of his wounds. So now Glum's relative is very happy to talk to him and he introduces him to all the members of the community. Uh, that's because Glum has proven in, in the eyes of the relative that he is worthy of his race. This is how it's written in the saga. So Glum passes the test. He proves that he is a real man. He proves that he can stand up for himself and that he is cut out of the same wood as the rest of his people. So both the, the birth initiation rite 
and also the later teenage initiation rite, they both serve a purpose. They serve to make sure that the sort of people who become members of the community are of the hardier type, of the stronger type, of the ones willing to stand up for what is right. I argue that modern societies disrupt or frustrate this process. Modern societies are designed in such a way that it prevents teenage people from becoming independent adults who are self-sufficient, who can take care of themselves and who, above all, are willing and able to defend their communities. So at first, we start out life as the child of our mothers. We come from her body, so at first we are, we are one with her. There is no distinction between uh, mom and me. Yeah? It's only when you become, when you are born, you come out of her body, you are still attached to her through the umbilical cord. It takes a few minutes to get rid of that. This is the first moment in your life that you have become physically detached from your mother. You are now a physical independent entity. The first years of your life, though you will probably be resting in your mother's arms for quite some time before you finally learn to walk. And when, learning, when you learn to walk, the second thing you learn is to learn to walk away from mom. You're going to explore the world on your own, but at first still with her supervision. It may take until early puberty, until your teenage years, that you are finally able to explore, uh, venture out into the world without your mother, without her supervision. It is during these years of early puberty, early teenage years, that you must um, develop your own personality. Or actually, I would say it's different. It's not that you have to develop a personality, but rather you have to stand up for the personality that you already developed during your early childhood. It is now, now is the point where you have to stand up for yourself and say, I am no longer the child of my parents and I am ready to become a member of my tribe. Practically every traditional people in the world has exactly this process where children have to transform from being the child of their parents, the property of their mothers, to becoming the property of their tribes, God or their elders and so forth. So, this, so there are these three processes that everyone has to go through in order to become a human being. First you are born as a child of your parents, then you must individuate. Yeah, show the world your personality, that you are no longer uh, a slave of your household, but that you are willing and able to become an independent person. This is, however, where modernity stops. The modern age tells you to stay there at this point where you've become an individual. So the philosophy of individualism has taken over almost the whole world, at least the modern world. And there's a problem with it because individualism tells you, okay, you've become the individual, but you are no longer allowed or able to join the tribe of your elders, your ancestors, the tribe of your fathers, your nation, your race, your whatever group, or the family you are going to found yourself. To the rest of your development, you no longer become a member of something bigger, of your group. And our overcrowded world makes it only even more difficult for young people to venture out and to, to join their tribes and to establish their own lives. Housing has become extremely expensive. There's almost no land where you are allowed to legally settle, build a house in the vicinity of water uh, with pastures for your cattle or land to grow your crops. So the world has become a household and in that household we all remain children. Uh, one author calls this the over-socialized leftist. This is a person who has succeeded in being born, becoming an individual, but then failed to become something more than that. And so we remain trapped in the household of modernity. Uh, modern big cities keep us trapped in small apartment boxes and expect us to live out our lives there. All we can do is earn a wage, but that's not the same thing as building a life. This is, however, exactly what the globalist overseers actually want. They don't want people to become truly independent, to learn to stand up for themselves like Glum did, to learn to fight back, to learn to push back. No, the globalists want people, all 8 billion of us, to remain children in the household of modernity. So this is where I think the whole philosophy of identitarianism ties into. 
it does indeed tie into the identity politics of the left. In fact, identitarianism is simply identity politics for the right. I think this, I think this is so because globalists have recognized that people on the right of the political spectrum, the right wingers, the reactionaries, they are about to form groups. They're going to join together again, to join forces and to push back against modernity. And this is a threat to the global household. So what better could you do than to try to atomize the right and to turn right wing people from say religious backgrounds or from uh, closely knit ethnic backgrounds, you want to break them apart. Do you want to prevent them from becoming, from becoming uh, groups with the strength to push back against globalism? So this is what I think identitarianism does. It literally gives you a sticker that says, hello, right-wing person. And you can stick it on your chest and feel good about it as long as you don't join forces and fight back. Well, fighting back is exactly what we're supposed to do. You see, fighting back is that third process. You're born, you individuate to become yourself, and then you join your clan, your group, your race or your nation or your religious outfit. Yeah? So the third phase yeah, is necessary to become human being. And that means in our modern world, we aren't left any other choice, no, way, no other way out, but to revolt against the modern world. Our answer lies not in identitarianism. It lies not in marching up and down the street, waving flags, wasting our time. Our answer lies in the revolt against the modern world, in leaving the household of globalism and establishing new societies, new tribes, new races, new peoples of our own.